Listen up, scumbags. I'm Madman Pondo, and you're listening to InYourHeadOnline.com. You better listen to it, or I'll come to each one of your houses and kick your ass. All right, we're back. Welcome to In Your Head Wrestling Radio. I am the internet icon, handsome Jackie Jones, along with my right-hand man. One inch biceps, a power go. Bah, how about that? Oh, man. And the man has returned all the way from the United Kingdom. Kalukale, it's Bobby Richards. Potato man. And right off the bat, he's calling in from the mall. He's he's uh, he's shopping right now. We got Violent J from the Insane Clown Posse. Welcome in your head. Thank you. Thank you. It's an honor and a privilege to be here with you great gentlemen. And I appreciate the opportunity for you guys to let me babble on such a prestigious show. <laughs> it's going to be good times. We've been looking forward to this for a long time. We're trying to get you on, and, and now we finally got you here. Let everybody know about Juggalo Championship Wrestling, which they already know about it, JCW, and you go to JuggaloWrestling.com. And right now you guys are doing, like, uh, something pretty special. you got the Happy Days Tour. You just want to, like, explain to everybody what that's all about? Well, you know, uh, it's sort of like a festival feel, this tour. You know, we wanted to open doors a little bit earlier. We got, like, five or six bands on the tour. And uh, usually it's just ICP with a couple opening acts. But we wanted this to feel like a festival. Now, since uh, we pretty much can't be, get booked on any of the other festivals because uh, our show is just too wild and too out of this world to be on any other show but our own, but we, we just, instead, we brung a bunch of great bands, and we even brung wrestling. We brung our JCW, and uh, that really gives it a festival feel. A lot of the shows we're playing are outdoors, so, uh, you know, the people come in, they surround the ring. It's just really cool. Even some of the indoor shows, we have JCW, and it's really exciting. For example, the other day we were in Kansas City, and I snuck into the upper balcony of this place we were playing it was the memorial hall i believe and uh, it looked like an arena you know this this building we were playing looked like an arena and uh from way up at the top watching down at the wrestling and seeing the thousands of people crowding around the ring and the lights from the stage pointed onto the ring to me it looked just like a wwe event it looked awesome man and i was i was really really proud so some of the indoor events are even cooler, you know, because of the way the lighting is and the excitement all trapped indoors. And it's been a lot of fun. I love I love wrestling. It's been it's been really cool to be able to take it on the road with us. Yeah. Now I know you got the uh, you got some stuff up on YouTube over at Psychopathic Video. You know, some uh, it's like uh, JCW Slam TV. Are there any plans to record any of this to put it on DVD or anything like that, or strictly uh, you know you got to get there live and maybe catch some of it on YouTube? Well. Well, we got up on the internet we call Slam TV Express, and uh, it's just put together by us right on the bus. You know, a couple of the guys know how to do video editing, and it, we, we film it with one camera, and um, our boy Kevin Gill, really talented guy with many talents, but uh, one of them is commentary. You know, he does the commentary play-by-play -play action, and um, we just show basically highlights where some of the bigger matches that are happening out here on the tour, and... Um, you know, it's just, we call it Express because it's not the regular Slam TV, which we put a lot of time into the editing, and we have great graphics and mm -hmm. packages mm -hmm. and cool things like that, vignettes and skits and, and stuff. This is more or less just one camera, real quick. We just show the highlights and the bigger moments, and we put it on the inter Internet real quick so people that you know, were not coming to their town and they can't see or people that want to keep up with JCW, they can check it out. And Kevin Gill also writes a post he calls a Referee Cap, which every show we have, he reviews in fine detail. And you can find all of that up at JuggaloWrestling.com. So uh, for the people that love JCW and want to keep up with everything that's happening, Kevin Gill does a show recap every time and, and uh, includes photos and, and footage sometimes. And then, of course, we got Slam TV Express showing highlights as well you know that's just to keep people updated on the freshness that's happening out here on the road yeah no i know you guys had like an uh, an open challenge for like uh, i guess for like the local indie guys when you guys are going around have you been impressed by like yeah. any of the guys that uh you know that 
that that answer the challenge? Well, it's cool because uh, you know we get to see different people every show. Yeah. You know, I'd say about ten guys show up. You know, and uh, and we choose them by whether we've heard of them or what we know about the guys, and also about their uh, ring attire. If they have a cool looking outfit and they put a lot of time into what they wear and, and how they present themselves in the ring with their character, if they have a cool gimmick or something like that, they'll have a better chance of getting on the show, you know what I mean? But, uh, you know, just to battle and to brag for a minute, JCW is like the, the, uh, one of the best kept secrets in wrestling. I mean, you ask anybody that's ever worked one of our shows or come to one of our shows, they're off the hook, man. First of all, they're packed every time, you know. I, and, we, and I know indie shows. We, we've done indie shows for years. And uh, nine out of ten indie shows, you know, they suffer from small, small attendance. And, um, and, and that sucks, man. I wish more people supported indie wrestling, you know what I mean? But uh, usually, the, usually the attendance is bad. And then uh, there's not a lot of money to bring in with lights and in-ring entrance fog and uh, effects and all of that. But JCW goes all out, man, and and uh, and, uh, and we don't get written about in the magazines, and very few wrestling media outlets talk about us. That's why you guys are so fresh, because you guys are actually giving us the time of day to sit here and talk, and you guys have a respectable show, and uh, we can't thank you enough. But um, I, I just wish more more people in in the wrestling world knew what was going on because we have a lot of great talent. We're one of the only companies that tour the entire country from New York to L.A. We tour every state. You know, our, our wrestlers, we run shows all year round. We run all the time. I mean, we'll put, we'll put 1,500, 2,000 people in a building and have one of the greatest high-impact energetic shows of the year and you won't even read about it anywhere. You won't even hear about it, and nobody will even know it even happened. It'll be something that happens just within the juggler world, and that's where it stays. And and sometimes that's cool, but other times it's unfortunate because uh, there's a lot of cool things happening in JCW. I mean, we had the great Muda in JCW, you know, yeah. wrestling, you know, and, and uh, we had a reunited. I mean, we reunited Hall and Nash in JCW uh, uh, almost probably a year and a half before TNA did it again, you know what I mean? And just cool things happen in JCW that kind of get overlooked or they don't get reported on. People have uh, misconceptions. They think, oh, if you're not a juggalo and you come to an ICP show, you're going to get beat up for what you're, you're wearing. Or if you don't look like a juggalo, you're going to get picked on. And all of that's bullshit, man. Juggalos are respectable, awesome people, man. Awesome fans. They don't pick on nobody at our shows. It's all love. It's all family. And uh, you couldn't be safer anywhere than at a Juggalo show because violence is on people's minds, man, unless it's happening in the ring. Everybody's there to have a good time. And it's unfortunate, the reputation we have, how it scares away a lot of non-Juggalos. But to tell you the truth, it's all BS, man, and, and uh and I'm so proud of Juggalos, and, and I'm so proud to be one. And I told you guys I'd babble, man. you got to shut me up. <laughs> well, I was going to say, because you mentioned Hall and Nash, and uh, we've had Hall on a couple times. We had Nash on, and I think we asked Terry Funk. And, you know, guys always really put over the JCW shows. They said, like, there's so much energy on the show. And, like, does that make you feel proud, though, when you're know, guys that are, like, really respected in the business and guys have been around for so long, like, you know, enjoy being part of your show and, and put it over? I I can't explain how proud that makes me feel. I mean, I cannot explain how proud. Oh, man. I mean, we were written about in Terry Funk book. I mean, we weren't just written about, but he put us over so tough in his book. Man. It's the book about this man's incredible, incredible life. And yet he found time to write about us in there, you know. And that just that just blows my mind out of the stratosphere. And the same thing, Eddie Guerrero, you know, we were we were mentioned and praised in his book, and, and I, I just can't I can't even breathe straight when I think about it. Uh, same thing with Dusty Rhodes, man, he wrote about us in his book, and, and he spent a, a lot of time talking about saying great things about us, about how we're good promoters and, and we know what we're doing. And, and, you know, people talk about how they come to our shows. They don't know what to expect. They're worried. They think we might be some kind of janky promoters and don't know what they're doing. And when they get there, they see how professional everything is and how, 
how professional we conduct our business and, and how, uh, and how awesome the fans are and how into it they all are. You know, we got guys that are JCW wrestlers that are superstars in, in JCW and in the rest of the world, wrestling world, you might not even know who they are or think nothing very special of them, but in JCW, these guys are making money. These guys are selling tons of t-shirts. These guys are, you know, they're, they're huge. They have a huge following. Guys like Corporal Robinson, guys like the Weed Man, you know, guys like Madman Tondo. These guys are legendary in JCW, you know, and, and, uh, and, and they have, you know, it's just unfortunate that JCW is so ignored or overlooked because people don't understand it and they fear what they don't understand, you know? Yeah. We've had, uh, you know, both Pondo on and, uh, and Corporal, he's called in a few times. We had him on probably three or four times and they're both really funny guys, always have great stories. Uh, do you have any, uh, story that really sticks out between those two guys? Man, I got stories forever. <laughs> stories and stories and stories. I mean, you know, we've had a lot of fun on the road together, you know, uh, Pondo and Corp, uh, Pondo just hit Corp's head open just the other day, you know. They had a match in, uh, Denver, I believe, two days ago. Or, yeah, it was, it was two days ago. And, uh, Corporal Robinson won his world title back from Pondo, you know. Mm-hmm. And, uh, we've just had tons of fun on the road, man. We've grown to be really close, you know, and, and uh, it's just an awesome time, man. I love those guys. I got stories, but I don't want to pick on them, you know, because my stories are picking on them. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't want to put them on front of you. Know yeah. what I'm yeah. Pondo's told us some like, uh, pretty colorful stories. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They'd be like, oh, I was hoping you'd say something, but I was hoping you wouldn't say that, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. I was always wondering, did any of those guys, like, ever think of something, like, so crazy, you just had to tell them, like, no, man, we can't do that. You guys might get killed. Oh, you mean like they want to do some some something in the ring? That yeah, wild. like some oh. kind of some kind of really crazy spot, and you just like had to say like, "Man, we can't do that." All the time, <laughs> all the time. And Pondo, Corp, they're always coming up with something crazy, man. That I'm like, I don't want anybody to witness a death. You know what I mean? <laughs> right, right. Like I, I'm not into uh, some of the things they're doing now with syringes and stuff like that. And these death matches, people are bringing syringes out, and people are bringing fish hooks out and stuff like that. <laughs> I, uh, we ain't having none of that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, uh, I believe sometimes less is more. You know what I mean? Like if you break out with a staple gun at the beginning of the match and you use it all through the match, it's like it plays itself out, you know? But if you break out with it one time and you staple gun something to somebody's lip or something, that gets over 50 times more than if you had the staple gun out the whole match. You feel what I'm saying? Right, right. Sometimes less is more, and that's my belief. Yeah. I, I actually saw one of his shows uh, recently. He had Butterbean on the show, who uh, I'm a big fan of Butterbean. I think he got robbed on Celebrity Wrestling. Uh, what was Butterbean? Yeah. Like? <laughs> He's super, super cool, man. He just calls the check-in. He had a, some sort of pay-per-view match the night before. When, or no, it was the same day as our show. And we played twice in, in Worcester. We played uh, a Friday and a Saturday. And I believe uh, he had a show, a big pay-per-view event that he was promoting on Friday night. And he called and offered us uh, great tickets to come sit down and see it. But we were playing, and, and uh, we couldn't thank him enough for thinking of us, you know. And then, and then the next day, he called to find out how the show went. And, uh, Corp from everything was cool, but, uh, we're just missing a wrestler right now. And he was like, I'll come down and do it right now. And we were like, no way. And he said, hell yeah. So he showed up, put on his gear, went out there and knocked somebody smooth out in about four seconds. <laughs> and didn't even have to break a sweat, man. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, he was, but- Butterbean was awesome for that, man. Butterbean's an international superstar, man. They know him all over the globe. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Definitely. That's the second time we've had Butterbean. That's the second time we, we've had him. And, it, and that's just great to have him on the fly like that as a prize. I don't even think the people in the building, half of them probably didn't even know who Butterbean was. They didn't even know they were seeing, you know, this this superstar, this legend. It's a lot like when we bring Abdullah the Butcher in. Sometimes people don't even know. They just say, come on, man, who's this old slow fat guy, you know? <laughs> they don't realize who the hell that is. That's Abdullah the Butcher, man. Been wrestling 50 years all over the planet. You know what I'm saying? You guys oh, yeah. know what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. Abby's the man. 
Yeah, well, we got some callers in the line. If you're calling in tonight, the number is 508-644-8503. And try to have one good question, so we don't want to keep you here forever. Uh, 803 area code, who are you? Hey, Jake. Yeah, who are you? Hey. All hey, right. Jake. See you, man. 631 area code, <laughs> who are you? Hi, I'm Matt. I just wanted to know when is the uh, FTB All Gold and Azure show going to be released on TV Day? <laughs> what? Hmm. hmm. All right, maybe we won't take far, but you got a question. <laughs> Yeah, Johnny Moxie from the message board wants to know what you feel the reaction to JCW going full time has been, and where you see it going from here. Well, I think people don't re- realize what we mean yet when we say JCW is going full time. But what it is is we've acquired a building, and um, we're going to be running free shows every two weeks out of this building in Novi, Michigan, and um, we're going to videotape. We're going to have TV every two weeks, TVing up on the Internet with another episode. And uh, we're going to do the coolest thing. First of all, we're tricking this building out to no end. We're putting bleaches in there. The whole thing is painted black and red with giant JCW letters and, you know, super superb lighting and super superb sounds. I mean, when a wrestler comes down to the ring, you're going to think it's a concert going on in there. It's going to be awesome, and we're going to film every two weeks out of there. But we haven't we haven't begun it yet, you know, so people don't realize what we mean when we say we're going full-time. But the other thing we're going for is to, uh, you know, get our rankings in everybody's magazines. We want to be included in the, in the wrestling world. We want respect, you know what I mean? We want to put guys under contract. We want to put guys on the road and, and uh, do all of that stuff all year round. So, you know, it. We haven't got much reaction to it, to announcing that we're going full-time. But then again, that's not really a concern of ours because uh, we're going to earn it anyway. We'll, we may not have it now, but we'll get their attention, believe me, you know. And just like now, we're getting the attention from the workers, but it's it's the media in the, in the wrestling world on that end that, we, that we've that we pretty much been ignored on. And we'll get their attention down the line, you know. I, I wanted to t- uh, take the time to tell you guys about something else that, that I believe is super, super cool, and uh, that is at the Gathering of the Juggalos, which is our once-a-year event that takes place. And um, this year we're having it in Cave and Rock, Illinois. And, of course, we have wrestling there. We have On Friday night we have Odd Bossling, which is where we have, you know, death matches. We have crazy stipulations. We have... You know, giants, midgets, women, whatever, you know, any kind of odd oddity we can think of, we throw them in the ring on Friday night. And on Saturday night is Bloody Mania, and that's where JCW's best collide with superstar names that we bring in from all over the world. But I wanted to tell you about Saturday night, late, late, late Saturday night, around 4.30 in the morning, we have this thing called... Midnight Massacre Flashlight Wrestling. And what that is, is wrestling in the dark. The only light on the ring is the flashlights from all the fans around the ring. So when you see that, it is the craziest spectacle you've ever seen, man. I'm talking all the flashlights around the ring all shining into the ring, and it just looks like, I mean, for some reason, it looks like you're in a sold-out arena and, and there are lights like cameras flashing or something. It looks like you're in a huge stadium. That's what it looks like to me with my imagination. But it's very cool. And, and last year, we just we announced it, Midnight Massacre, Flashlight Wrestling, Bring Your Flashlights. But nobody knew who they were going to see. Nobody knew who was on the card. And, uh, and so they're waiting there to see who's on the card. And we brung out Raven. Nobody knew these guys were even there. We brung out Raven. We brung out Balls Money. We brung out Sabu. We brung out Kamala. We brung out Jimmy Superfly Snooker. Tommy Wildfire Rich. I mean, it was off the hook, man. The most hilarious, funniest, craziest wrestling you'll ever see. And toward the end of the night, toward the end of the card, the sun is coming up. So there the sun's coming up. It's like 5.30 in the morning, and Kamala's wrestling Jimmy Snooker in the ring. <laughs> it's just <laughs> the most wildest stuff you could ever imagine, man. 
and, and, and it's, it's historical, and it's going down again this year. We got a fully loaded list of superstars, and, you know, half of them are drunk. They don't, you know, it's late at night. Nobody knows what's going on. We tell them we don't care who goes over. Just go have fun. Have a blast. You got guys breaking gimmick. You got guys breaking character. You got guys having so much fun in the ring, doing funny stuff, acting wild. It's just the most greatest for a wrestling fan to see that, man. To see that happening in the ring is beyond awesome. I mean, we saw Kamala talk on the mic. You know what I mean? You, know, you get to see things yeah. and hear things. It's just the greatest, greatest time in the world. And that's the kind of fun we have at the gathering that the whole rest of the world doesn't know anything about. They have no idea that stuff is even happening, and it's going down at the gathering, and it's just the greatest. Like, you know, I remember, I remember a while back TMZ reported that Jimmy Snow, or reported that Roddy Roddy Piper smoked a little bit of weed at the gathering, and they had it on footage. I mean, whoever it was that sent that footage to TMZ was a bitch. You know what I'm saying? Because... What, st- what happens at the gathering stays at the gathering. And somebody like Roddy Roddy Piper smoking a little weed, that don't hurt nobody. And that's what the gathering's all about, is everybody being themselves and being free to be themselves. And whoever said that footage can see, stuff like that never happens, man. It, the gathering is a super, uh, you know, secret. It's, it's, I've seen things I'll never tell about, you know. <laughs> seen everybody in their wildest state at the gathering. I've seen people walking around. Just, I've seen utter total madness <laughs> that takes place at the gathering, man. Stuff where guys will lose their jobs in a heartbeat, but we'll never talk about it, and nobody does. It's all it's just a beautiful thing, the gathering, man. It's yeah. one of the greatest times for wrestlers, for the bands, and for the fans alike, man. Uh, you guys should come to the gathering and be our guest this year. You guys could do a live broadcast from the gathering or something. Oh, that would be that'd awesome. That would be pretty awesome. I'd be up for that. Oh, yeah. oh man, please be our guest. We'll bring you guys in, set you guys up with a nice spot, man. It will be awesome. That would be really has, – uh, has Kamal ever sang at one of the shows? Have you ever heard Kamal's? No, but we, we, <laughs> we did find out that he does sing. Yeah. Let's make love in a rocking chair. That song's a, that song's amazing. That's one of his oh, hits. Yeah. He's never sang, but what we have twice had Roddy Roddy Piper do stand up comedy, and we had <laughs> oh. the Iron Sheik do stand up comedy, <laughs> and um, we have booked Terry Funk as drunk Terry Flunk from Stranglemania, <laughs> and uh, and we've had the Headhunters come in oh, man. as nice Ana Rosa and Sweden House from Stranglemania. <laughs> Yeah. You know, we've had some of the wildest wrestling. I mean, we bring in we bring in big names just to do a run in. You know what I mean? We had DDP run down the ring and do a diamond cutter. He was done in thirty seconds. People didn't even know that was him. You know what I mean? Yeah. We just do fun things like that, man. Mm-hmm. We'd love I'll... to have you guys down there. That would be awesome. I got to ask this too before we let you go here. We got a few more minutes with you. But uh, any chance we'll ever see Violent JJ versus Colby Carino? Wow. <laughs> yes, there is a chance. Because Violent JJ skills are growing every day. And, and when we're done with this tour, we're going to put together a video of all his highlights. Last night, I seen him do a damn tilt a whirl arm drag. <laughs> a tilt a whirl arm drag followed by a second rope knee splash perfectly. I've seen him do a top rope splash. I've seen him, he's got the vicious slaps, the vicious chops. He's five years old. you got to see it to believe it. And if he wasn't my son, I would be just as amazed as I am now because I've never in all my days watched wrestling have I ever seen a five-year-old do the stuff he's doing. And we're going to put together a whole video, set to some music, of him doing all his stuff and all his tricks, and we're going to put it up on YouTube and just watch it soar, man, because I know people are going to trip out. Uh, Intro, do you have another question? That. Yeah, Lost Flog from our message board wants to know if you guys are still on good terms with TNA after the uh, Scott Hall incident where you guys were in the front row. Yeah, you know, that was a, that was a pretty crazy incident, man. <laughs> 
You know, uh, we went down there and invaded the, the uh, pay-per-view with Scott Hall, and uh, we ended up on TV in the front row. <laughs> it's like, if they didn't want us there, why'd they let us in, you know? Mm-hmm. It's not like we just snuck to the front row and jumped there. I mean, we <laughs> called them, told them we were there. Mm-hmm. They came to the back, asked us what we wanted to do. You know, we said, we want to go on B on TV. And they were like, all right, we'll put you on the front row. So we went out there for two matches. Then they said, all right, that's it. Then all kinds of heat came out of it. And I still don't understand what that whole thing was. I thought it was awesome, man, because here we were. We said we were going to do it, and we did it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then, I, I mean, I heard word that the heat was on Scott Hall. They were mad at Scott Hall. But right now... Where's Scott Hall at? He's in TNA. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's just that, so I don't really know. Yeah, I mean, well, what's wrong with that and some excitement to the show? And you got people talking. What's wrong with that? Hell, yeah. I think it was one of the cooler moves. I think that uh, I think Rhino was mad because he was having a match with Davari, <laughs> and uh, people were a little bit stirred up when we came walking into the arena. But you know what? Being there, I can tell you, I don't believe we took away from their match because even though we were sitting there front row, the people were popping their moves. They were popping on everything that was happening in the match. And I, I think we might have took away from it for about two minutes when we first walked out. But as soon as we had our position and we were there in the front row, it was all eyes back on the match. And it seemed like those guys were working hard, and I don't think we took away from them. I don't know if that's how Rhino feels. But I know, I think he shot me a dirty look when we were standing out there, so I don't know. Yeah. Uh, we're going to take a quick call here from uh, Duck Man, who does our theme song. I know he's been waiting to call in and talk to you. What's up, Jake? I just want to tell you that I started rapping like 10, 15 years ago because I was listening to ICP as a wee lad. And uh, you're a great inspiration, plus I'm a huge pro wrestling fan. So how do I get on Psychopathic Records? <laughs> 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 well, you gotta, first of all, we gotta be looking for somebody. We're a small label. We don't sign a bunch of acts and, uh, you know, that's not the way we, we operate. We sign very, very few acts and when we sign somebody, we spend a lot of time on them and try to make it happen. So, uh, you know, right now we're not even looking for anybody. We got our hands full. We got artists right now that we need to improve on and get their sales up. And right now, it's just, you know, we're not even doing anything. So I'd say it's pretty much impossible at this point, even if you got a bomb-ass rhyme. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but if we were if we were signing, here's how you do it. You, you, you hang around, man. You, you send your stuff in. You follow up on it. You keep showing up. You keep popping up. Because out of sight, out of mind. And if you're always there and you seem to always be coming around and you got new music and you're constantly there and you're constantly knocking on that door, I'd say that's that's the best way to do it. Thanks for calling, Duckman. If we go to the gathering, we'll bring you along, Duckman. For sure. I live there. Yeah. I'll check I it promise out. you guys, if you go to the gathering, it'll be something you remember the rest of your life as one of your greatest memories. I promise that. Oh, man, we want to thank you for coming on. We know you actually got a show coming up tonight, just the, probably a little bit, right? Yeah, yeah, we're staying busy out here, you know. Yeah, and you had a show just last night. We're talking to you. Go, you got to go to JuggaloWrestling.com, and you can follow where all, where you guys are going. Any of any uh, cities stand out for you right now Like uh, that you were impressed by? Oh, man, I was super impressed last night by Salt Lake City, you know, when the when the matches started, there was a smooth, I'd say twenty, uh, I'd say eighteen hundred people out there, and it was just, they were just so energetic. Those guys, those local guys that were working the show, they couldn't believe it, man. They were standing there behind the curtain when the match was starting, and there was all these chants going on and all this thick excitement going on in the air. And those guys were looking at each other like, "Holy shit, man!" <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh. So it was really cool last night. It was. Great in Denver. There was about 2,500 juggalos watching wrestling there. And, uh, we had a lot of great shows so far. There was one or two that, that, uh, that didn't see the, where it might only been three or 400 people watching wrestling because, uh, the fans might have came later in that night. 
But, uh, cause wrestling is the first thing that happens. But, uh, one or two shows where we where we could have started later and we would have had way more fans watching, but the rest have been off the hook. It's been a lot of fun, man. It's really, really been awesome. Cool. Well, we'll thank you again for coming on tonight. Thank you, brother. Yeah. And, and you know what? We're going to be all over that trying to get you guys at the gathering, and that's my word, man. All right. We'll do it. Intra and I are up northeast. Uh, Barbie might be a little hard. He's actually in England. Yes, I am. <laughs> Hmm, we'll start planning now. <laughs> <laughs> August 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th, man. Remember those dates. Etch them into your brain because it's going down. Listen, if you're not listening to In Your Hip, you might as well kick yourself in the ass. And the bottom line of the whole thing, you'll fear what you don't understand and hate what you can't conquer, bitch. <laughs>